Marriage Champions, I'm Amy Morgan, the feature writer for The Marriage Initiative, and I am so excited to introduce Dr. Greg Smalley to you today. You might be familiar with the Smalley name, as Greg's father, Gary, was one of the pioneers in the marriage field. Together, they established the Smalley Center, which now has become Focus on the Family's National Marriage Institute, where Greg served as president. After a stint at the Center for Relationship Enrichment at John Brown University, Greg and his wife, Erin, joined Focus on the Family and have spearheaded their marriage division for the past 12 years. Erin serves as a strategic spokesperson for Focus on the Family's marriage ministry while also working in private practice as a licensed professional counselor, while Greg serves as vice president of marriage. The depth and breadth of resources available at Focus is extensive and includes dozens of those Greg and Erin created to empower champions to support marriages in all ages and stages, including their books, Crazy Little Thing Called Marriage, nine lies that will destroy your marriage, their new reconnect, and assessments and curricula like Ready to Wed. The Smalley speak at marriage enrichment seminars. Erin co-hosts the Focus on Marriage podcast and is a frequent guest on Focus on the Family's daily broadcast, as well as many other radio shows, including Live the Promise with Susie Larson. Greg, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Amy, thanks for having me. Well, you and your wife, Erin, have such a history and a heart for families. Can you just share with our marriage champions kind of how you got started? Yeah, I was uh, all through college. I wanted to go to law school and counseling, marriage ministry. None of that was really on my radar. I mean, it's what my father did and I love what he did, proud of what he did. But I just was feeling called, led to a very different type of work. And then I, I I didn't get into the law school that I really wanted to. And so someone encouraged me, hey, why don't you, you know, why don't you sit out a year, take some graduate classes and do really well, reapply. And so I, I love the idea. So I ended up at Denver Seminary in, in their counseling program. And once I got in there, I, I just fell in love with counseling and thought, man, this is what I really want to do. And, and that began kind of my my journey. So I ended up at, at uh, Biola University, Rosemead School of Psychology, and did a doctorate there, and then moved to the Midwest. My parents were in Branson, Missouri. And so kind of as I was finishing up, I was just going, now, what am I going to do? And we would just have people that would literally show up at, at my parents, their home or their office saying, most of it were guys going, my wife left. You know, I don't know what to do. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay in this RV out in front of your house until someone helps. And, yeah. and so that's really, that sort of began uh, a, a great partnership with what my dad was doing, um, more big enrichment, you know, writing videos, that kind of stuff to where I could then come along and, and help couples who went love the material, just can't apply it. Like we need help. We need, we're in crisis. And then it was always my wife and I, it was her dream to, she was a nurse for many, many years, a uh, labor and delivery nurse, and she always wanted to go back. And so kind of when I was done with mine, we had agreed that I would look, I would find a job that would be flexible enough to where she could do then coursework all Monday. And so sure enough, I found a job that allowed for that. And so she got her master's degree, but then she would always tell me, you know, I want to work with couples. I don't ever want to stand on a stage. Don't you dare ask me. The answer is no. And I was like, that's great. And then one time she said, you know, as I as I listen to you, I feel like I could do this. And it would be so much better if you and I were up there. And, uh, you know, I'm going, hey, you're preaching to the choir. And, of course, <laughs> so that was probably, gosh, that was probably 20 years ago. And, and then we started doing that and, and now here we are for focus and we get to speak around the world. We have about 15, 16 international offices that will go and help them think through marriage and do some events for them. And we just, we, we love doing that. As a matter of fact, Amy, I always tell people that, that when COVID hit, it threw Aaron and I into a little bit of a crisis in our own marriage because we had to figure out a new way to learn how to how to deeply connect because you know we we speak about 15 times a year so 
we, you know, during before COVID, it was, you know, we would invest so much time into kids and friends and church and other stuff at home because we knew in a week we were going to be at some cool location, having a date night, being alone in a hotel. And, and so COVID caused us to go, gosh, that's no longer available. What, what does that look like in our own marriage? So we're, we're like you in the fact that we, we always have to be growing and learning and trying to figure this out, how to, how to have the kind of marriage that we're both thrilled with the direction is going. Well, Fortunately for you, you guys had just written the book Reconnect. Yeah, that, right, that you that's ironic. Right, right then, and yeah. so let's talk about that since yeah. it kind of birthed out of you know your own experiences, and also I think you said just what you've been seeing as you yeah. do speak in marriage champions. You can get the Smallies to come speak if if that's something. Yeah. You like. Absolutely. You know, we just as we would travel, as we'd work with couples. We just would hear a lot of couples saying, you know, we, we're, we're definitely committed to each other. We, we love each other, but we just were so disconnected. We just we feel like roommates and you know, we drifted so far apart. And, and as, as I heard that, I, I, I kept thinking, I wonder, is it the same reason for everybody? Do all of us drift in our marriage because of this one or these two reasons? So we just started to ask people and then we really took that into a little bit more formal research to where we discovered kind of 10 big reasons why couples tend to drift. And, and, and what I like about the book, therefore, you, you start with a, a little assessment so it'll pinpoint for you, okay, here's, here's kind of what was going on in our marriage and here's why we're drifted. And, and, and then it, 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 you can go to those particular chapters because we built it so that each chapter gives just here's the problem and then here's a, a simple solution. You know, my my mind, the way it works, I just like don't give me more than two things. Like I can handle two things. And and so kind of each chapter just here's two ways to deal with if it's busyness or exhaustion or living parallel lives or you know unhealthy conflict or a sexlessness or whatever, whatever the issue is then there's just some simple ways to, to deal with that. Well, you brought up exhaustion and I, that's something that I think we talked about, about self-care. Yeah. And, and that you notice that being kind of a, an area that people are yeah. bad at. Really? They are. Yeah. Cause no one teaches this. I mean, it's, it's rare when we ask someone at, at one of our events to hold up your hand. If you had parents or parents who modeled just how to be well cared for, full, whole, healthy. And it's every once in a while someone will raise their hand and I always look at them like, yeah, right, whatever. You don't even know what we're talking about, probably. Yeah, right, yeah. But most of us just didn't. You know, we, it, it's just not something that we, we've done a very good job of as a, as a Christian culture, especially training people. What, what does it look like? So we, 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 our definition of an adult is someone who is fully responsible for and is actually doing the job of caring for themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And so like my, my son, I have a 21 year old son. So for years he would debate this with me going, dad, the law says that at 18, I can go fight in a war. I think I'm an adult or at 21. <laughs> I have two young adult sons myself. <laughs> yeah, and, and so sadly, we we sort of equate adulthood with these, you know, now I'm 18 or now I'm 21 or now I'm 25 and can get a rental car and not have to pay <laughs> as much or whatever. And it's, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do is, am I fully responsible for my well-being? And am I doing that job of taking good care of me? And so when, when we're doing that, because then, you know, two healthy, well cared for individuals can then build a great marriage. But unlike math, where two negatives equal positive in, in marriage, that, that, that formula is disastrous because two unhealthy, two worn out, two exhausted people will never create the kind of marriage that they're longing for. And th there's no way around that, which is why for the Reconnected book, that's that's the there's an intro chapter and then that's the first chapter because you can't go past that like i don't care how connected you want to be if you're empty and have nothing to give 
you're never going to get connected. So I can teach you all kinds of clever ways to connect relationally, but it really has to start with that individual. And we just teach, you got to figure out what gives you rest and what brings you life. And as an individual, if you can just, just remember two things, just look at what, 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 what causes me to recharge? So what gives me rest? And then what, what brings me life? What energizes me? What unleashes the passion? You know, what, what causes all that joy and that excitement when I do it? If you figure those two things out, I think you've gone a long ways into being well cared for. I love that. And you talked about too, you know, there are couples that, that if they continue to disconnect, that's going to lead to perhaps a place of crisis and you, and you guys have, you know, focus has resources for the crisis couples and marriage champions. I mean, that's often that pain point where they, they, you know, they may be mentoring or maybe they're stepping in. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the hope restored intensives just for a minute. And then the new resource you have for champions birthed out of that. Yeah. Well, I love that God's allowed us for the past 20 plus years to, to run hope restored which is we the, the main program is five couples, four days, all couples who are in some form of crisis or just you know feel so stuck in their marriage. And, and so at this point, we've seen over 11,000 couples go through that program and, it, and, and we research them, we, we follow them and about 81% are still together. And again, we, that, that God gets all that credit. We've learned a lot just by, by working with these couples. And, and there's been so much good content that's come out of that, just learning how do we help couples in crisis. And so it's it's a great, what I like about it is that, so for, for example, my wife, Erin, is in private practice as a marriage therapist here in Colorado Springs. But often what she'll do, she'll be working with a couple and when, when they're just, it, when they're stuck, and, and she is truly one of the best counselors I've ever been around. Like she is so good at that. But for her, when, when they feel really stuck, she'll send them to Hope Restored. They get, you know, four days. It's about 30 plus hours of therapy. And then in, 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 it gets them unstuck and it, it, it drives them to the roots in a way you can't do when you're seeing them, you know, every other week for a couple hours or whatever. And, and, and then they come back and they, they keep going with Aaron. And, and that's often the, the perfect way to, to utilize the Hope Restored is to go, let me, let's get that couple in there. But ultimately, Hope Restored, we want those, that, those couples back with a community, you know, rather that's with the, the initiative and the, you know, the resources and assets that you guys have or work with a counselor, or that church and, have a mentor, whatever, but, but it, it, the idea is that it takes a village to raise a marriage, yeah. you know, in, 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 thus we can all work together in that way. How often do you guys offer the hope restored? Cause I, I, as a marriage champion, I'm just thinking that would be really valuable information. Yeah. Well, we have now we have five retreat centers around the country. One that, that is being opened up and here will be opened up probably within the next probably four or five months is in Wimberley, Texas. Um, but otherwise, you know, we've got Branson, Missouri, in Atlanta, Georgia, um, Michigan, outside of Grand Rapids. Um, Phoenix, Arizona is another one that, that's just being opened. And so the, the goal is we would love it to where they're, they're, it's, it's, there's a retreat center every all across the country, six hour drive for any one person, because that, that is, we've researched it. People are willing to travel about six hours. Okay. And so that's our hope to open up a retreat center everywhere so that it's at least six hour drive for couples. And, and so it's exciting just to see kind of where the program's going in, in all of what we're learning. And so we, I feel what's unique about focus is that, we have a, we call this, that's our marriage lab. You know, I mean, we're, we're not just saying, Hey, we have some good ideas that we think would work with couples. I mean, we know 11,000 couples later, we know some things that work and we know some of the big lies that, that couples buy into, which is, you know, Bob Paul and I wrote nine lies that will destroy your marriage. Cause that was 
we we we've narrowed them down to there's about nine big lies that we hear from couples. But anyway, so that it gives us a great little marriage lab to then release content or curriculum books. I mean, all the stuff that we do really flows from what we're learning there. So it's a, I, I love it for that reason. And those intensives then are ongoing. It's not like just once a quarter or. Oh, no, they're multiple every day. So, so yeah. it's, yeah. So we, we, you know, I don't, I don't know what the wait list. I'm, I'm sure there is a wait list for those, but, but definitely there's, there's, I mean, we probably have 40 counselors who, who work all those. I mean, there's multiple intensives every week happening around the country. Well, that's good for marriage champions to know when they come across that couple, like you said, that's either in crisis because of, you know, an infidelity revealed or an addiction or something, or you said sometimes there's just those couples that they haven't connected for yeah. so long. Yeah. They've, they haven't dealt with the issues, which is, you know, as, as we look back on COVID, that's a part of what was going on is that all of a sudden, you know, couples who get really good at deflecting whatever those issues are, ignoring them, get involved with kids or whatever, you know, work, hobbies, all that left. And, and they had to deal with that and it exposed, you know, shine a big old spotlight for a lot of couples, which is, I mean, that's a good thing. We've got to be growing. We've got to deal with this stuff. And I'm, I'm so proud that so many couples who were like, okay, we, we really should deal with this finally after 20 years, they, they did that. Some didn't, but, but a lot did and and they're doing well now. That's so good. Well, you have a brand new resource that's just going to be hot off the presses in June. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk for the and it's just for it's developed specifically for our marriage champions to help those crisis couples. So let's talk about that because that's so exciting. Yeah, one of the things that we know to be true that in any church congregation, about twenty four percent of the couples are really struggling. I mean, they're get, they're either in crisis or near crisis, and people are more likely to reach out to someone at church long before they'll reach out to, you know, a counselor or look, you know, at hope restored. And so we, 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 we love that because it represents an, a huge opportunity for churches. And, and yet there, there's nothing really on the market for mentors within a church to be trained to walk with couples in crisis. So we just simply took everything we've learned from doing the intensives and we put it into a 16 week program called Marriage 911. And so again, we, we didn't make this up. We took everything we learned from intensives and then we started, we partnered with a church in Branson, Missouri who, who really wanted to do this. And, and, and so over the past two years, you know, we, we wrote the curriculum, they put it into action got a whole bunch of feedback, revised it. And so we've just been doing that back and forth. And it's finally at a place where we're all going, okay, this is it. And so it's just, it's a great tool for a mentor. So a champion, you get trained. So we have a whole training video series that, that you go through. It equips you to then use that. And then you'll be able to use that for 16 weeks in you know, the church in Branson, they, they saw, they, they would say, so this is not formal research, but anecdotally, they felt about 90% of those couples that went through and finished the 16 weeks stayed together. And I'll take that. I mean, I'll take anything close to that. That you know? is amazing. Yeah. Well, I just imagine too, being a marriage champion, you know, that couple comes to you and you're kind of deer in the headlights. Like, oh my gosh. You know, 24 percent, that's a big percentage in the in the church. And you want to be able to help. But that's the scariest place, I think. Yeah. You know, you're not just leading, you know, a reconnect session where you, you know, where it's, it's you know, talking about some hard stuff. But yeah. it's but still it's enrichment. It's, you know, more fun. I mean, fun being fun. But yes, it's it's it, but when you're like feel like somebody's got your you, their marriage is on the line. Right. I, I just can only imagine how valuable this is. And they're not alone, right, too, because they can have support. Like you said, you can be their wingman, right? Not only will they can they participate in Marriage 911, they can call focus. They can call yeah. you, right? Yeah, we have a whole licensed Christian counseling team here at Focus. And, and so a, a, a marriage champion 
working with a couple in crisis, they run into an issue. They're like, ah, we have no idea what to do. They can call it for free and talk to one of our counselors who will, you know, again, help them think through, okay, here's what I would do. What do you think about this? And, and it's just, it, it's exactly that. We just, we want to be the wingman. We love that this is going to happen within churches. It's the very best place to get couples connected into going to church involved in small groups and just the community that churches build they're so awesome at doing that and and that's exactly what a couple needs a couple you know in crisis can't have just a counselor they need a counselor they need a mentor they need their support group through their bible studies or small groups they you know they need all that they 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 need to to know that there's there's hope from because people are fighting for their marriage. And I always tell people, I believe that a marriage can survive off of someone else's hope for a season. You know, it's not a long-term solution, but but definitely at, if, if, as a mentor working with a couple, I man, I believe in them. I'm fighting for their marriage. That, that can go a long, long ways to getting them to a very different place. And you even have a special website for marriage champions, correct? The marriage you champions. Do. Yeah, if, if you go to Focus Marriage Champions, so plural champions.com, because what, what, what we believe is that, you know, th there's an army of people out there, as you guys well know, because you're, you're finding them and, and recruiting them through your efforts, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that, that want to invest in other couples. They have that passion. What, how can, how, how can I be used? We, an analogy I love using is that the, the Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea, but nothing flows out. And God doesn't want us to have Dead Sea marriages. He As he pours in like the Jordan River, as he blesses us, he wants us to turn right around and, and invest in, in others. And what a great opportunity to, to, as a, to use your marriage to, to invest in, a, in another couple. Rather, that's you know, we it, it, we give just simple like pray for another couple. You know, go and babysit. When Aaron and I, when we were in graduate school, had no money. There was a little couple that would ride their bike over to our little apartment in Southern California. I remember this seriously happened. The, the there was a knock at the door. I opened the door. This this older couple standing there, and the guy I didn't know who they were. The guy hands me a twenty dollar bill and says, "We're here for your daughter Taylor." And I'm going, did my wife just sell our daughter for you know, $20? I feel like we could have gotten more. And, uh, but, but this is what this cup, that's how this couple invested, you know, in, in, in our marriage by saying, we're going to come over. I think it was about every other week they would watch Taylor for free and they would hand us a $20 bill. And Aaron and I would go out and have a, have a, a burger and we would talk and reconnect, and then we would do something fun. We usually would play Miss Pac-Man at this little burger <laughs> room. Yeah, and, and and we left a very difficult season of you know real intense graduate work, more connected than when we showed up, simply because of this couple. Like we can pray for a couple, we can babysit, we can walk with couples who are hurting, we can you know tell them our marriage story over dinner. I mean, there's so many easy ways to invest. And that's really what we want to do is to say, Hey, you don't have to sign up for some expensive program or, you know, you don't have to take an, an assessment and score at a certain range. How about if you have a passion to invest in another couple, we'll give you some, some really simple ways to do that. And then man, go unleash, be the Jordan river for another couple. Well, I, that is so inspiring. And, and I think too, about those young couples and, we would be remiss if we did not talk about your uh, resources that you have too yeah. for that pre-married, that couple that you could mentor that is, you know, getting married. I, I, and my boys and uh, relatives are at that stage right now. My husband and I are stepping in for, for a relative and um, I'm really excited about that. So tell us about your Ready to Wed program. You yeah. still lead it, right? You wrote it and you still lead it at your church. Yeah, yeah I do. Tonight is our, I think, fifth meeting with, with, we have five couples who are getting married in our church. And so that's what I love is that I'm also a marriage champion. So I do the premarital work. 
for free at, at our church. And, and that's the way that I want to invest in other couples. Um, but it, it's what it was. So we, we did all the research. It seemed like the difference for couples who did well and those who didn't is that these couples who are, were doing well in their marriage got at least 10 hours of premarital education. So we built it to be 10 hours and then they 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 get that and then it's 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 all the right information like communication and you know god's design for marriage and conflict and sex and commitments and just all the stuff that, that our couples really need to hear but amy I'm, when you and i were talking earlier i would still argue those is, is you know it's great to give them good information but honestly the best thing that premarital counseling, premarital education does is it trains this couple that it's okay to get help. That that they're 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 saying to their marriage that, hey, as 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 at some point when we go through hard times and we're gonna need help, we did it before we got married, let's do it now. And and, and that I think is the best benefit because you were just if it's a good experience, then they'll remember that going, hey, remember, we went through that class and it was great. Let's go see a Christian counselor. And, you know, we're stuck and let's, you know, let, let's get help. Yeah. You know, and that was so freeing for me because I was feeling kind of that that weight, which I would imagine some marriage champions would. It's like, OK, there's so many different programs did i choose the right one you know and 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 that is really freeing to know that really god is working through whichever one you know ready to wed i'm sure is absolutely wonderful and but it's it's not so much about the program it's about right. being that mentor it's about like you said setting up that expectation totally. there is there are great places to seek help yep. and that's normative that That's everyone it. is going to need some support at some time in their marriage. Oh, and, absolutely. And there and to know, oh, okay, there are places to to do that. And we had a good experience, like you said, and we can and we can find it again. Tell me a little bit. I love what you said, how you'll talk to the the kids and and say your big question for the future son-in-law. That was I thought that was really compelling, especially yeah. since boys are that age. Well, when so I have three daughters. So when my oldest daughter, Taylor, I, I knew this young man that she was dating was going to come ask me at any moment, you know, for my blessing. And then I kept thinking, what, what's good to ask? And I should probably ask him some good questions. And so, you know, I, I asked around a lot and just kind of dug in and, and figured out 12 questions. So I wrote an article called 12 questions that every dad should ask his future son-in-law. And, but the, the one, so I've done, I've had this now uh, three times. So I've had, this young man and i've asked all these questions now three different times and my favorite one it always stumps them is uh would you marry you and and getting at this idea that you know don't look for the perfect mate become the perfect mate you know wh what are you doing to to be healthy and how are you taking good care of yourself and are you dealing with baggage you know as it says in the bible to leave and cleave well, part of what you're leaving is your baggage from the past. And that requires you going and getting some help in dealing with, with the junk that we all have. I had it. We just, my wife had it. We all have it. And, and the more that we're willing to do that, man, the healthier we are than as, as, as that boyfriend, fiance, and eventual, you know, spouse in, in, I, I, that's, if I could go back and talk to a 23 year old Greg who was about to get married, that that's all I would talk about is saying, you know, Hey, Greg, love you. This is your 55 year old, you know, this is you in the future. Sorry if I look <laughs> like you thought I would, but, but you've got some significant baggage. You've been really wounded and you're going to walk that in and that's going to cause your wife and you a whole lot of pain. And God will use those scars and God will turn all that into to treasure as he promises. But you know what? How about you just get some help in and deal with that? So wow. that was so that's how why I think that's so important. 
Well, and I, and I would imagine too, I mean, you grew up in the house of a marriage expert and if, yeah. in relationship. And so if you even, who you really admired and loved and, you know, eventually worked with, you know, that's a relationship a lot of people don't have with their fathers. Yeah. So if you still came with baggage, even having, you know, what one might consider, you know, one of the better situations in life, yeah. I mean, that's not everybody's history. Yeah. And I, I think that's definitely a question I'm going to ask uh, my family member and my, and my own kids and say, hey, guys, do you think you're ready? You know, you're as you're dating and this, are you, would, would you marry you? <laughs> I think that's a great thing to ask. Yeah, it, it gives them great information. So. Oh, gosh, Greg, this has been so much fun. I just so enjoy talking to you. And I know that our marriage champions are going to find so much value in this. But we have run out of time. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks again for what you guys are doing. You know, we're, we, we are all in the same fight together for marriages. And I love that we get to do this together. So thank you for your ministry, for what you guys are doing to strengthen marriages. Oh, well, and we, we are stand on the foundation of a uh, of focus that started, you know, before. So you, you guys have gone before. So thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. And as always, Marriage Champions, if you'd like to learn more about Greg and Aaron, you can find us at marriageinitiative.org.